Hello, fellow Viking fans. You're watching the GG Sport Podcast, a podcast of the Minnesota Vikings, where we endure heartbreak but always bleed purple. We are your hosts. I'm Jamie Gellerstedt. And I'm Casey Granda. And today we are going to take a look at the Minnesota Vikings head coaching candidates, at least in our opinion. Uh, I mean, obviously there is some speculation of, out there about interviews that are going to happen, interviews that could potentially happen. Um, obviously the team is going to go um, general manager first. Uh, I, I saw a tweet. This is a kind of a two-part tweet about both, both, both the GM and the um, the head coach from Ben Gessling today of uh, Star Tribune. He said that the Vikings are starting to line up some uh, GM interviews. And after that, he added a little uh, a little pre, a, a little um, separate part to this tweet. He said, also heard this, the head coaching job is in high demand, lots of interest because of the talented roster, which we had talked about, we both kind of assumed was going to be the case that this, the Vikings, it to be honest, be. I mean, they're going a little bit, I mean, people are saying they're going slow. It's been two days and they still haven't hired somebody. Like, let's just let the process play out. But <laughs> you almost get the feeling that some of these coaches actually might hold out on making a decision until they get an interview with the team. Because, you know, right. I mean, we've talked about it, just how talented this team is. And there's, if we keep a lot of the pieces, there's a chance, there's a chance this could be a playoff, potentially Super Bowl caliber roster. Yeah. Um, and in my opinion, all the teams, even including the Raiders, I think we have more talent than the Raiders. They're in the in the playoffs. I get it, but I would say I think we have the most talented team and the most talented players yeah. of all the teams that need a coach. Definitely, definitely. Um, so no bias. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I guess you know, looking at what we kind of want in head coaches. Um, I think the the feeling around the fan base is offensive minded is probably the way to go. Um. Yeah, and a good point I heard about the offensive minded coaches is that, you know, if you're a defensive minded coach and you get a good offensive coordinator that pulls your off, puts your offense to a new tier, those offensive coordinators get taken for head coaching jobs. So you got to bring in a new offensive coordinator, change your scheme. If you go with the yeah. offensive head coach, that scheme stays the same throughout the entirety of their time. True. So I think that's why AY offense is a good idea. Um, I know me and you had both kind of talked about wanting a little bit younger of a coach, and younger could mean age. Uh, cause we got, we go a little controversial with that right away in our, uh, when we do a top five list here. But, um, I mean, I kind of think of younger too, as in like someone who hasn't had that chance to be a head coach yet, which also we contradict later, you'll see. Um, but like, but somebody who could bring some new ideas, maybe, you know, has a new mindset, um, a new mindset on how to run an offense and how to run a team. Someone who kind of understands like the younger generation. Um, and then in the NFL, young coaches, you know, I mean, they're not like young because you, know, you don't get to be a, most people don't get to be a head coach when you're in your early 30s. It just doesn't happen super often. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we'll get into a little bit more of that later. We just kind of we wanted to lay out our thoughts on what we're looking for in a head coach. Um, college wise, I personally, Jamie, how do you feel about the jump, like a straight jump from college to pros? What, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, straight jump. I guess. I don't know. Recently, we haven't seen a lot of success. I guess who, it depends on who that coach is. Yeah. Maybe. Because I mean, uh, there's, you know, like Pete Carroll came straight from college. You know, he did fine. You know, there's there's examples out there of coaches right, that work. Right. Like you said, none in really recent yeah. memory that I can think of. But uh, Jim Harbaugh, who actually we'll talk about in a little bit here. Yeah. Too, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The recent he, one that made that jump. But you see the likes of like Matt Rule's a big one coming from mm -hmm. Oregon to the mm -hmm. Panthers. That hasn't worked out. He pulled Joe right, Brady, offensive right. coordinator, or the offensive coordinator of the 2019 LSU uh, national title team. He got fired this year. Yeah. So it's just, a lot of times that jump doesn't quite work. Um, and one thing you have something to say for. Yeah, before. I was just going to say, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's better. I think it's really important to have that, like the professional type coaching since college is a lot different. And if there is like a big name that is trying to make a jump, which I don't think there really is um, like just like Kelly with the, the Eagles before, which actually didn't really end up working out either. You know, it's that okay. would be like, that's an interesting name at the time that when he came into the league, it was kind of like at the time I might've been like, Oh yeah, I want Chip Kelly. Cause you know, he's just, just the way he plays and stuff like that. But I don't, it's just, that's just the style doesn't work. And it's kind of showed. Um, I don't think, you know, there's chance for, for it to be successful, but I agree with you where I think you, you pull from, from coaches that are in the NFL, uh, whether it's, you know, an offensive coordinator, or even a coach that's had his chance before and, and trying to get a second chance at it, just because, you know, they're going to run pro style offenses and they just have a better idea of how things run that way. Right. And it's just, I feel like that jump too from college to pros, it's just, you're dealing with, you're in college, you deal with kids, 
you know, kids who are, you know, learning how to be away from where they grew up. And, you know, a lot of times they need a more motivational voice. Yeah. And in the pros, you're expected to be professional. And the head coach is just supposed to try to manage all the egos and fit people together. Right, right. Um, so that's where I think there's a little bit of difference in the two uh, styles. Um, so, But a big one that I've heard that I want to start with here, uh, Lane Kiffin. When I hear the name, I don't get excited, mainly just because of my, like the thoughts we had about that jump straight from college to pros. It just doesn't work out often. He did have a chance with the Raiders back in 2007, 2008. Um, obviously, it was one season, so that didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, I actually – put a poll out on our Twitter, on our Twitter page, GG sports podcast on Twitter. You can find us there. Uh, and I just said, been hearing a lot of rumors about Lane Kiffin being a potential candidate for the head coaching job. How are we mm -hmm. feeling about this? A I'm down B I could be convinced or C in Minnesota fashion. Heck no. Um, out of 37 votes, 65% were in the heck no category. 19% <laughs> uh, I'm down and 16% could be convinced. Yeah. I feel like everybody kind of feel it would be a very interesting option, but I, that's just, I just want to put that out there that I just yeah. don't think a college coach is the way that we want to go. Yeah, unless uh, Nick Saban decides to come up here. <laughs> He's done it before too. He's made yeah. the jump and it didn't work out for him. So maybe this, if yeah. he, if he came out and was like, all right, I want to give it another chance. Right. I'd maybe do it because maybe just maybe, maybe. but um, anyway, so potential head coaches, let's, let's take a look here. Uh, there's, this is a quick list off CBS.com. This was actually put together a few weeks back. But the list is mainly the same as what it's looking like now. You got, uh, uh, let's see, it started at the top here with Eric Bieniemy, uh, Todd Bowles, Jim Caldwell, Brian Dayball, you know these type of guys. Leslie Frazier already had a chance, didn't really work out. Jerry Gray, former Vikings uh, defensive backs coach. Daniel Hackett, He's Packers good. OC. Vance Joseph's had a shot before. Byron Leftwich, Mike McDaniel of the 49ers, Josh McDaniels, Kellen Moore, Raheem Morris, Kevin O'Connell, Doug Peterson, and then Dan Quinn, of course. Um, just so there's just a list of some of the guys when we considered our our top five list, a couple of the guys that we looked at. So we'll jump over here to our head coaching candidates. We kind of already talked about what, about what we're looking for about in the offensive minded we're, category. Yeah, maybe definitely a younger. I think younger that's styles. where. Yeah, you kind of go through like. Once you have a defensive coach for a while and it doesn't work out, and your offense isn't running the way you think it should be you kind of like switch all right let's try offensive now and like let's say this doesn't work then we probably would want to be like defensive again but it is time i mean we're our talent we just have so much talent on offense that i think zimmer didn't get the best use of out of it so you de i think we definitely want a coach that can come in and at least uh get better use of them and we i mean last year we we're already the 31st worst defense so it can't, I mean, you could argue that having a defensive coordinator is good because you have a better defense, but we still did all right with that. And you can't imagine that our defense can get much worse than 31. Right. So maybe, if you have an offensive coordinator come in, what are you going to say? And maybe he wants to bring in Vic Fangio to be our defensive coordinator. Didn't make it as a head coach, but he could always, I think he'd be a pretty rock star defensive coordinator. He's shown it in the past. So it's an option. It's an um, option. But anyway, we're, we'll start. We started our, our list here. We, we had a few honorable mentions uh, as mm -hmm. we talked about defensive coordinators and um, and college coaches. Is and those basically make up our um, honorable, honorable mentions. mentions? So Jamie, let's start off with the first honorable honorable mention. Head the coach boy, that is the one, the lonely, the one guy. I hope stays no matter what, but not as our offensive coach or our coach probably. All right, go ahead, click it. Oh, I have to do it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Andre Patterson, uh, obviously Andre Patterson has been with the team for a long time. I think yeah. he was even here before Zimmer got here. I think he was here as part of the Leslie, uh, Leslie Frazier regime. Um, yeah, just a very, you know, well-respected in the locker room. Uh, he was given the opportunity to be the co-defensive coordinator, probably just should have been the outright defensive coordinator. Definitely. But I mean, like you said, if he, I think they will give him the interview. They'll give him the time of day just because they do respect him that much as a person and as a man of the team. If it doesn't work out, I do hope that the new coach and GM keep him around as mm -hmm. uh, as a as the defensive coordinator potentially, yes. maybe a part on the defensive staff if he wants it. Just because I feel like he is so re well respected in the locker room mm -hmm. and a well respected figure of the team that I would I would love to see the guy stick around in some yeah. in some role. And he's proven like a defensive line guru and and turning like the most random defensive lineman into Hunter. really good players. I mean, Hunter, 
Everson. I mean, we've seen, I mean, how many sacks did, uh, well, we saw Wilk or Wilkis at the end. I mean, look at him. He's kind of just came in and he's putting pressure on I me. And this guy just, I don't know what it is. Won't him. I mean, what, how many sacks did he end up with? Uh, like, I, think, no, I think nine. I think nine. I mean, that's a lot. Again. Like that's one of them probably wasn't expected to get nine sacks. It's just, this guy is so good at, he's just a defensive line guru to me. And I think that's so valuable. And uh, especially in the league these days, you know, rushing the, rushing the passers is, is only getting more and more important, I think. Right. So, I mean, like we said, I don't think, I don't think he's going to be the guy who knows if he, if he even wants to be the guy, but I hope that in some way, shape or form we can, uh, we can find a way to keep yeah. around. Uh, so, next honorable mention candidate is sticking on the defensive side of the ball. Brian Flores, of nice. course, big, big surprise that he was fired from Miami. I mean, yep, you get yep. it three seasons. They didn't make the playoffs, but they had a lot of wins with a roster that really, you know, wasn't yeah. that super talented. A uh, well-respected guy. Everybody loves him. Like you should have, when he got fired, there was shock all over. The people were just absolutely surprised that the guys out there. The only reason he didn't make our top five, he almost made the cut. The only reason he didn't, as we mentioned, is because of the defensive coordinator thing. But I think he's that young guy you want. He understands the players. Um, he comes from the Bill Belichick coaching tree. So obviously he, the guy knows how to win. Um, I think he would have been a great choice, but I don't know how you feel about this, Jamie. But I think I think we kind of feel the same way. Just the defensive, yeah. The fact that he'd be a defensive head coach is kind of the worth defensive it. head coach. I mean, if we did get him, I, I want an offensive coach, but if we did get him, I wouldn't be mad. I think you know he made Miami a lot better than I've seen them in most of my life. Um, so that's pretty impressive. And what was I gonna say? I don't know. He just has. Oh, I was just gonna say. I think he'll end up going with the Bears. Uh, for whatever reason, I just think he they always wanted that defensive guy. I feel like even though last year they didn't, but it didn't work out, so they'll probably uh do that. But and oh, yeah, you mentioned like you know, the, he dealt with like a lot of injuries, like Tuo's injured, Devontae Parker's been injured, like all like his team's had a lot of injuries and they kept winning and they beat Bill Belichick and the Patriots. So I think he could be a really times. good coach, yeah, multiple times. So I was very surprised that he was he was fired by them and i think someone else is gonna get a really good coach i just don't oh, think yeah. we're that we just need the offensive mind but if he did end up on our team i wouldn't be too upset no me neither me neither um so yeah that's our feelings there uh our final honorable mention of course is uh jim harbaugh from michigan formerly mm -hmm. of the san francisco 49ers formerly of stanford uh he wins everywhere yep. he goes i mean obviously there is a couple down years in michigan this last year they made it to the college football playoff obviously they got they got smoked um against uh, georgia who ended up being the national champion yeah but yeah. you know and people are just kind of thinking now like it's a, it's a serious conversational point him to the him to the nfl is a pretty real uh, possibility right um i think maybe he saw that he could never you know maybe they're not gonna be able to, he's not gonna be able to turn michigan michigan into a national title team maybe he's you know just wants to take that next step again um i would like it i think the, the harbaugh brothers are obviously really good coaches um I feel. I wonder if there's a little bit too much Mike Zimmer to him. He's intense though, but he's he's. I think the players like him because he's very intense, very vocal. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I think I think he's going to end up in a bigger market team. I know Vegas has been talked about. I just don't think Minnesota right, right. is going to be a spot he's going to want to go personally. Yeah, I'd probably put him higher on our list if I felt like there's a solid chance we'd get him. And I just don't think, like you said, he. I mean, they've already mentioned Vegas, and I think. You know, if he goes to a team, like if you're going to, I guess the Raiders aren't playing. I don't know. Maybe it's just, I don't, maybe I just think the Raiders aren't as good as, as their playoff spot, but. Yeah. I um, I, I mean, I'd be fine with it. I'd be cool with it, but yeah. I, I just don't, I just don't see it happening. It would so, be crazy. I think that would be like the biggest, the big blockbuster one that would probably, even though right now it's like, oh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but if we had him, I bet you would bring so much excitement in just because you know, like his success and everything. Yeah. Um, which sure. there is another guy that will, that will roll into uh, right, right. that has um, success as well. But so we'll start with our uh, top five list of coaches that we, a realistic possibility of being hired. We'll start with number five, um, Kellen Moore of yep. the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, we've seen what the guy has done with that Dallas offense over the last couple of years. I don't remember if his first year as OC, as OC was last year, or the year before, <laughs> Um, but they always put a very talented offense out there. I mean, obviously what he's been able to do with Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. CD lamb, uh, Zeke Elliott, Tony Pollard, right, that right, offense right. has, the you know, they 
what they put in their last two games, they put up over a hundred points. Yeah. So, I mean, in the last three games, they put up, there's two games within the last three that scored 50 each. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the guys obviously got a good feel about offense. Um, but my was- main concern as we talked about is where it gets a little bit kind of contradictory is I think there's a chance he might be almost a little bit too young. He is 33 years old. And mm-hmm. I just feel like, and he's still young at the offensive coordinator spot. I just feel like there might need to be a little more, you know, a little more seasoning there with, right, with right. him, you know, where maybe, I mean, I think he'd be a good coach personality wise, but maybe, I mean, I guess I don't know the guy, but to me, when you look at him, he looks like he's timid and maybe <laughs> needs to, but I mean, who really knows? That's right. Just speculation yeah, yeah. For, for me. But I mean, I just think maybe he might need a little more seasoning, might need a couple, maybe another year or two. I mean, I don't think he's going to last a year or two. I think someone will hire him this offseason, but he might need a little more time of being a coordinator and kind of learning. I don't want to say learning the game a little more, but I just, that's the only reason I'm skeptical is I feel like he might be a little too young for the job. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, you could be right. I think he's, it could be like a boomer bust thing though. Like is if, if he ends up turning out pretty good, like a McVeigh, I mean, like a, yeah, like a McVeigh. Um, I mean, you have a good head coach for years and years and years and years. So it's one of those things where I think it could be, it could be too early, but what if it isn't, you know, it's kind of a boomer bust thing, um, with our talent right now. And, you know, we'll see what we do with Kirk cousins and stuff, but I mean, I think you kind of would want someone a little bit more seasoned. I think if we like really, if we were like, let's say even Jacksonville or something like that, maybe you could take a chance on, a on a younger head coach, but I mean, it could work out. And, and if we did get them and our entire top five, I'll just say right now, um, you know, I wouldn't be sad if we had any of any of these guys in our top five, you know, some maybe a little bit more exciting than others, but I mean, I think a lot of these guys have a chance to, to be good coaches. And, and Kellen, it's been reported that Kellen Moore is interested in the Vikings, which in we said Vikings, a lot of yeah. a lot of these guys are going to be. Right, but I mean, right. you know, young guy with like looking at the roster we have, I, I I'd be excited if I yeah. was an offensive minded guy. I, you know, I, think I do want a lot of potential there. Yeah, I do want to say real quick that the you know you mentioned all the talent for the Cowboys, so the Cowboys are pretty talented on offense, and they have a really good offensive line. They pretty much have someone at every position, so you can. And we'll, uh, there's other guys on here like that too, but. So you never really know how much is him and then how much is just the talent. But but to be fair, that's that's what you could say about any head coach, any offensive coordinator out there, you know? I mean, Probably. It's, but it, it's it's all about how they, you know, it's all about the, like the play calling, as we've seen. with I mean, obviously, Dak Prescott, I'm sure he has some autonomy over the plays, but I don't think he's out there calling plays. No, no, no. So no. I think with overall offense, I think Kellen Moore would be a good fit. I just think he needs a little more seasoning to get to, to get mm-hmm. to that next, to get to that next step for being a head coach. So All right. that's, I think there. Move so on number, to number four. number four, another, another guy that was passed up on last hiring cycle. And people were surprised about it. Brian Dayball out mm-hmm. of Buffalo offensive coordinator. He's been the offensive coordinator there since 2018. I mean, what's, what else is there to say this offense? I mean, there's a few games where they, you know, come back down to earth a little bit, but overall it's a high flying offense. Uh, He's shown he knows, you know, how to develop a quarterback. Uh, obviously, right. Josh Allen, we've seen his progression over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, utilize Stephon Diggs the way Stephon Diggs would like to be utilized. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I just I think he's a great offensive mind. His offensive schemes are always really, really good. Uh, he's 46, so he's not young, but he's also still young. You know, he hasn't, yeah, had, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't had his chance at a head coaching spot yet. Um, mm-hmm. And again, he's one of those. He's not going to last anymore this year. This He will get hired this offseason. Um, my one concern with Dayball is that that offense does not run the football with a running back often. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's because he doesn't trust his run. I mean, he's starting to use them a little more now, but with right, Delvin right. Cook, he's such, you know, you're paying him so much and he's such a focal point of the offense. I mean, I know we yeah. don't want the same offense as we've had in the past, but you'll wonder if he won't utilize Delvin Cook to his full potential. Yeah. Uh, that's a concern. I think, you know, other, you know, other than that, like what you said about Josh Allen is pretty, amazing to see like he's he uses josh allen so well and in, in his using his strengths um and that's pretty impressive and you do wonder too you know maybe it is just a a situation thing where you know he knows he has josh allen josh allen's legs and you know guys like stefan diggs um and emmanuel sanders and beasley and all of them so i mean he might just use the offense to what their strengths are because even though singletary has been playing very well 
and Zach Moss. You know, he has he's fell off a little bit, but he, they have a couple you know decent running backs, but none of them seem like they're that feature back. So maybe right. that's the reason, and it could be a possibility that's yeah. the reason. Um, which would if that is the case, and he can really just get the most out of the talent he has, he could end up being a really good head coach. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's one that I I've kind of a keep my eye on. If we get, if we get Brian Dayball, I'd be pumped, but yeah, he's not, you know, it. still only number four. So yep, still number four, yep. we'll move on. Let's number three, a little bit younger again. Yep. Tampa Bay's offensive coordinator, Byron Leftwich. Yeah. Uh, now I saw someone talking about why, like, why is Byron Leftwich so high up there? He, you know, he, before Brady showed up, there was a chance he wasn't going to be with Tampa anymore, but I think, you know, in two years, yes, he is the offensive coordinator, but his quarterback is four years older than he is, right? He's, yeah. you know, his his quarterback's been playing, I believe, since before he started, and he's still playing after he started. Right, right, so right. even though he is the coordinator, um, he's been there since 2019, I think in the last couple years, I mean, I think since he's technically kind of his boss or whatever, I think he learned a lot from Tom Brady. Um Bruce Arians is also a great leader of men. Everybody loves playing for Arians. He's kind of got that same Zimmer mentality, but I think he's more like complimentary of his team. And I think, you know, Byron Leftwich working under him for the last three years, I think, and working with Brady, I think he knows, I think he's learned a lot about leadership, uh, mm -hmm. especially, you know, coming from a culture like that. So I think that's where he'd be a good fit. And, you know, he's seen what Tom Brady has done on offense. I mean, obviously, even with Jameis Winston, they were a, an offense predicated on taking deep shots. Mm -hmm. um so and that, is that bruce arians rubbing off on him you know kind of like the coaching style could be but that's fine that's what happens that's how these coaches they learn under somebody that's where they get their offensive philosophy from but i think and they use their running backs still so i really think that byron left which would be a really really good fit for this team and he's a little bit younger as they say so right, i mean i would right. be i would be 100 cool with it yeah i think it'd be an interesting uh for us to to get a guy like byron left left which uh he he's another guy that you know, I think he could kind of have that boomer bust thing um, a little bit, but you know, just because you don't know, I don't know what what it is sometimes about uh, young quarterbacks that come up. At least, I don't know. It seems kind of weird, like even with Kellen Moore, but I think he he could end up being uh, a boom coach, and he's been pretty he's been doing pretty good over there in Tampa Bay. Um, I do think though that it would be interesting if he did become the head coach for the Jaguars. It would, it would. That mean that might play into it as well. But I mean, yeah, I mean, he'd be going to a team. He'd be he'd be able to take a team and sculpt it instead of going into a team that's already talented. And I think that's one thing too why maybe a young guy wouldn't want to come in. It's just like the team's already there, and a G, and be, but like the talent's there. But I guess that's you know you're ready to win now instead of having to sculpt the team the way you want it. Potentially not reaching those heights and getting fired after a couple of years. I don't really know. But I think Byron Leftwich would be a really good fit here. I'd like to see it. Um, again, still not number one, but he was up there. It was the top three. I know we were talking about it. The top three were really kind of hard to decipher between. Um, yeah. Anything else on Byron Leftwich? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much for him. We'll go All to right. number two. Num number two, I, I, Ooh, this, I he's grown on me over oh, the Peterson. last couple days, even just thinking about it. When I, when they first kind of talked about Doug Peterson, I'm like, God, I just don't know. You know, Philly coach, 38 7 comes to mind. Nick Foles kicking our asses, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, God, mm -hmm. I just resent the guy. I'm kidding. I actually don't. <laughs> but, you know, then I thought a lot about um, the issues that he had um, with the last year, you know, with the whole weird right, thing right. where he benched Jalen Hurts and put Nick Sudfeld into the, or Nate Sudfeld into the game. It was a weird yeah. ending. I was like, okay, so maybe this guy's got kind of an arrogance to him and just kind of isn't a team player. But you find out, then you realize Philly's organization is just, it's weird. It's a weird organization. I don't think any of them get along. I mean, they had that video of, you know, the owner and the GM, Jeff Laurie, kind of going after each other after the draft this last year. And you just feel like there's a dysfunction in that organization. Uh, but, you know, he was there for five years. He's um, He was there for five years. He brought him to the playoffs three times, obviously, the Super Bowl run. Cool. So mm -hmm. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's not young. He's 53. He's been there, whatever. You know, I know we kind of want that young offensive mind. But He's a good offensive mind. I believe he coached under Andy Reid. And um, yeah, I just, I think he would be, I think he'd be a really good fit. Um, come in. I mean, he's been to the Super Bowl. He knows how to coach a mm -hmm. Super Bowl caliber team. Right, I think he'd right. come here. If we keep Kirk, I think he could take Kirk and bring him to new heights with this offense. And I think he'd bring in a fresh mindset 
And I think I think players do like playing for him. So I he's he's really really grown on me thinking about it for the last yeah. couple of days. I think he's definitely the safest for us and the talent we have. Because I mentioned earlier, like having young a young coach come in here it might be not worth a gamble since we have that talent. He's someone that could come in and you know he has he's already like you said he has the experience and and the wins and uh you know Super Bowl and stuff like that. So yep. he could come in and, and you know turn our team around, Kirk around if he. You know, if we keep Kirk, we don't know yet. I'm right. gonna see if we do get Peterson. I just, I, I would feel like we maybe would keep Kirk, yeah. um, unless we were able to somehow pull in a different, uh, veteran quarterback, maybe Russell Wilson. Maybe not, hurts. But... <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, a guy that's been there, done that, won. Yeah, the we Super know Bowl, what we got. It's just agree. Yeah, and we've already we mentioned this before too. And and there's a chance he's number one on our list if. It, it, it does come down to the whole thing with Hurt since uh, Stud fell at the end of that game because, you know, that was kind of sketchy to see, and and you don't want to see your coach kind of do something like that. But we don't Unless know what's going on there. finger to the organization. Yeah, really pretty know, much, you know. which is kind of funny. If Hopefully, like, if they actually were kind of screwing with them and stuff, or it'd be, it was like a funny thing, but right. we don't want a coach that will do stuff like that. But. Right. You know, I don't because outside of that, I mean, I mean, when he was coaching there, you know, he was hyped and everything like he was one of the top coaches in the NFL at the time. So, I mean, if we got a coach like that, that just, you know, I think he could fit like a glove on our team. Yeah, but, for sure. I, I like him. If we get him, I'd be pumped. But number one is kind of, I think number one, the number one guy has been number one on the list for a while. Uh, lots of questions about why he's still a coordinator, not a head coach. He is also not young in age. He's 52 years old. We are, of course, talking about Eric Bieniemy, former running backs coach for the Minnesota Vikings, has worked mm-hmm. under Andy Reid in Kansas City since 2018 as the offensive coordinator. I believe he – I can't remember who he took over. I think he took over after Matt Nagy, honestly, if, if I remember right, potentially. Um, yeah, probably. You're probably – But I – you know, there's not any – you know, I mean, Andy Reid said it himself. Like, he doesn't know why this guy doesn't have – doesn't have a job yet. And that's one thing people question with him. It's like, is it Andy Reid? He's got Patrick Mahomes. But obviously the offensive coordinator, he's in that position for a reason because Andy Reid trusts mm-hmm. him to help the players learn the offense, help grow the offense, help grow the players. Obviously we saw, I'm sure he had a he had a huge part what happened with Patrick Mahomes this year when he struggled a little bit and he kind of coached him up. Um, obviously, but, but the thing is learning under a guy like Andy Reid for as long as he did, you learn things. You learn how to lead. You learn how to run a team. You learn all of this stuff. And to me, the fact that he's been here before and he's yeah. on teams that have won, he's been a part of a back to back Super Bowl runs. They won one, lost one. I, 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 I think he would be the best fit for this team. Again, not mm-hmm. young in age, but young in the fact that he's never been a, a head coach before. And I, I would, I think he, I think he'd be the best fit for this team. Yeah, I think I definitely. Uh, I definitely agree with you on that. I think, you know, the fact that he has been here with the Vikings before and he was well respected at the time. And honestly, he could have been uh, promoted within our organization because we seem to do that, is not promote people in our organizations to become head coaches other places and become very good. Brad Childress and Tomlin. Uh, so maybe this was another guy and maybe we can get him back before that happens somewhere else. And so I think it could be really good. I, you know, I do think he's a really good fit, and I would be happy for him. I still would say, um, I I would maybe say Peterson could be the best possible fit for us. But again, with the whole thing that happened there, it does kind of make sketchy, and that's the reason why uh, he's not right. number one. I mean, just so, like I, I think getting fired just always kind of puts that weird, you know, smudge on your resume. Just yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. and you don't know I mean, what it's, really it's, happened it's, there because. It's I mean, head coaching. Everybody gets. I mean, Zimmer said it best. You're hired to get fired, which is very true. You know. Yeah. So I I, I get it, but I I, I don't know. Coach, I, yeah. I still. <laughs> yeah. It's and that's like we said. All five of these. I mean, the top three are definitely interchangeable. All five of them, though. All eight of them, really. If if, if it happened, I mean, yeah. I think Andre Patterson out of all of them would be like the one to be like. Ah, really, that's who we're going with. Yeah, but just okay, because I, I like just him. feel like we could have him on defensive coordinator and then yeah, have a different head coach. Go, yeah, and we, and but... especially since we want an offensive right. coordinator, you know. Yeah. So, so I'd have to agree with you on that. So and, overall, I mean, I think this is a very good list. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of other names we kind of went over before this started on that CBS list that would be fine. But I just think these guys are the top five guys that if we got them, I'd just be like, that's it. We're Super Bowl bound next yeah, year. Yeah, I think you – know? uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I th- I agree. I think those these top five, I'd be happy with any of them. I think even, you know, Kellen Moore, I think 
if we had him, it it could just not work. But then it'd just be exciting. Like, what if what if he's that guy? Right. You know, he did really yeah. well in Cowboys. He's young. He's he could be our Sean McVay. He could come um, in. We can make it the Kellen and Kellen show. Kellen Moore, Kellen yeah. Mond. Let's go. Yeah. He just comes in and cuts yeah. Kirk Cousins. No, I'm just kidding. We can't right, do yeah. that. <laughs> who, who really can't knows, afford that. But uh yeah, I mean, I th- I think I think that's a really I think that's a really good list. I think those are probably the top five guys on most people's radars. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super excited to see which direction they go. I mean, obviously they'll go GM first and then head coach after that. Uh, but I think they're already starting to line up interviews because you know you can always do an interview getting a feel for a guy, especially if you feel like these guys will hold out to coach your football team. So yeah, I- I'm excited. I'm excited to see where the direction of this team. Any other final thoughts? No, let's just let's just. Get it right. Let's pick the yeah. right GM. Let's pick the yeah. right head coach, and let's let's turn this team around and let's go Super Bowl earlier than later. But yep, we'll see. Yeah. I'm in. So, all right, guys. So that's it for our that's it for our potential head coaches of the Minnesota Vikings. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave your comments in the comment section below on our top five list. Who you would take out? Who you'd put in? If you agree or disagree, let us know. If you d- agree or disagree, and why. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more on down for more on down the rest of the off season here. We will definitely when that GM and head coach are hired, we will talk about that in depth. So with that being said, we will see you guys in the next episode next week. Skull Vikes.